everyone. I wanted to give you a brief overview of Beowulf as well as talk about the heroic code. So Beowulf is one of the most important works of Old English literature and the oldest example of Germanic heroic literature. It's believed to have been written between the 8th and 11th centuries, and it is housed today in the British Museum. It's also one of the most translated texts in human history, and it comes from the tradition of oral storytelling. So uh, the text is full of alliteration, which is those repetitive consonant sounds at the beginning of words. And so it really lends itself to auditory consumption. It sounds beautiful when read aloud. The author was anonymous, but we do know that he was an antiquarian. He was fascinated with the artifacts, customs, and the beliefs of his pagan ancestors. And these are included within the story. So the story is about the Geats and the Danes. You can see their neighboring territories here. And this is set in Scandinavia, and Beowulf is a hero of the Geats. And he comes across to help the Danes because they are in trouble. We have the character of King Hrothgar, who is king of the Danes. And Beowulf is coming to help him because there is a, a monster named Grendel, who's an outcast. In the story, he's associated with the character of Cain in the Bible, and he's generally representative of evil. So he invades the Mead Hall, Harrow, and this is symbolic because the Mead Hall is representative of the power that the king has um, accumulated over time. The Mead Hall is beautifully decorated, it's the center of government. It's a place for gathering and feasting. It's a place where the king gives gifts to his warriors when they have served him well. And the warriors also sleep there. So it's a very powerful symbol of the success that the Danes have uh, accumulated over time. It's also considered to be the largest mead hall in the world. So for Grendel to invade here um, is really a sacred kind of place for him to come into and of course they don't want him there. Now as you go into the text you're going to notice some mixing of paganism and Christianity. As I said the author was very interested in the pagan traditions of the peoples at that time. So there is elements of pagan Germanic culture, but there is also elements of Christianity. And this is because the manuscript was written down by scribes who inserted Christian overtones into the story. So they were basically not thrilled with the pagan um, uh, details in here, and they were trying to insert their own worldview and influence in the text. So Beowulf is then a pagan story wrapped in Christianity, and you're going to see some of those inconsistencies in the text. For example, the king is described as a pagan who doesn't know God, but you'll notice in the text that he's constantly thanking God for his good fortune. Um, also, another theme here we have is the heroic code. So this is, according to your handout, it says the entirety of the Beowulf poem can be read as a description of the heroic code which regulated the lives of Anglo-Saxon men. And there were different um, aspects to that. One was masculinity. So the men's behavior um, was something which the socially dominant class approved as fitting for a warrior. So there are certain ways they were expected to behave. Um, there's also reciprocal loyalty. And so this was between the warrior and his warlord and for his service in battle, the warrior would be rewarded by his lord with not only gold, but also public recognition of his heroic deeds. And of course, this was something that was usually done in the Mead Hall, where he, they would receive gifts from the lord, as well as recognition for what they had done in battle. Next, there's revenge obligation. And this was not only to the family, but to the warrior's lord. So the warrior would um, was expected to revenge his lord by killing anybody responsible 
before the Lord's death. If that wasn't possible, then the warrior was expected to fight to his own death in attempt for revenge. Uh, next, there was courage, and that was even in the face of defeat. So courage needed to be shown in the heroic code, no matter how dire the situation. You can see this in the end when Beowulf goes to fight the dragon. He's very courageous, even though the situation is dire, but he doesn't even ask any other men to go with him because he hopes to defeat the dragon and get that extra glory for uh, being so courageous. So as you go through the text, I want you to look for those inconsistencies where the scribes um, inserted that Christian worldview over the paganism that's present or mixing in with it and elements of the heroic code where they are evident in the story. So let me know if you have any questions and I hope you enjoy the story.